Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at an issue that has come up for uh, a number of subscribers who have emailed me and uh, left comments. And that's how to use OS X Server when you have dynamic DNS. Now, as we've talked about, uh, the ideal for a server is to have a static IP address because it's that public IP address that you would use for remote access. So if you're trying to get into your server remotely, uh, the IP address would need to be the same for you to get that access. Well, for those of you that are uh, with an ISP that don't have a business package, you're going to have a dynamic IP address, which means that that IP address can change from time to time depending on uh, your provider or depending on if your modem has to restart or whatever, you'll get a new IP address and then that will mess up all of your settings at your domain provider so that then you can't have remote access until you go in and change the number to the new number. So what I want to talk about today is how do you use the uh, server application when you have dynamic DNS? How can you manage that to make it work? And so I've had some users, uh, like I said, uh, some subscribers kind of ask me about that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Now, one of the first things that, uh, that you can do is get something that will update uh, your dynamic IP address and keep it in sync, right? If that could be in sync with your domain name, then you would have no problem in accessing your server. Now, there are a number of services that allow you remote access, and so let me just show you a couple of those here or at least one of them. Uh, DYNDNS is one of those services that a lot of people have used in the past. That one comes up frequently. Uh, it used to be a free service where you could get a free, um, basically a free domain name that would allow you to have access remotely. Uh, now you have to, you get charged for it. It looks like it's $40 a year uh, to have this service where you can set this up. And what they do is they allow you to create a prefix in, in front of like dyndns.org or .com so that your, uh, your name would be like, let's say, Todd Oltoff at dydns.com. And so that's one way to do that. Now, those of you that have done that, and there's a lot of other services out there too, like No IP um, or a few of those other ones, uh, Free DNS is another one. Uh, you'll see a bunch of these different ones that will work with dynamic DNS. Uh, the trick then is to figure out how to get this to work with server. Now, what I've covered before is I've showed you how to go to uh, like your domain name provider and set up an A record and all that if you have a registered domain. If you don't have a registered domain, this is another way to do that. So you don't just have to use the public IP address on your router. So you'd go and create this account. Like I said, maybe it's Todd Oltoff at DY, uh, dyndns.org. Then what you would do is once you've got that created, uh, they have a tool that you would download that would be on your uh, computer uh, unless you've got a router that allows you to do this but you'd have this on your computer where it would automatically uh, track down your public IP address and then update DYNDNS's servers with that public IP address so you download this installer that would do that now once you have that up and running what you would need to do is let's go back into server app here is you would need to change your host name to be equal to that new DYNDNS name that you set up. So in order to do that, you'd come in here and go through this edit host name uh, process here where it's going to evaluate your network. You go through the different screens. Uh, you'd still say internet right here for the access. You go next and then right in here is where you would put in a new host name and that would be that DYNDNS name that you just came up with. And then you would say finish and then there's a drop down that asks if you want server to set up your DNS for you and you would say yes. And then it would set up all the DNS records down here that you would need to make that work and then you're all set. That way your IP address is always being updated no matter what changes and it functions like it's using a static IP address. Let me just cancel this for a minute. Now a couple of things before you do that, if you've already gone through my setup tutorials and you've gotten to this point, a couple of things you'll need to do. Uh, you'll need to turn off your different services here. Um, I'd probably turn off DNS and delete the records. You need to get rid of your open directory as well uh, because that's going to be tied to the old host, host name. Uh, those sorts of things and then start over or if you're starting from scratch you can do it that way as well and that will work and that's one way that will take care of your dynamic uh, DNS for you. Now there's another way to do this as well uh, that I stumbled across uh, with, a, with a service that will allow you to use your domain name that you have registered and point it uh, to their servers and then you can use that domain name in, in order to manage your DNS. So let me show you what that looks like as well. 
Okay, so here we are over on a website called Namecheap. Now, Namecheap is a domain registrar. Uh, they do that and hosting and a bunch of other things. And so Namecheap has a free uh, dynamic DNS uh, setup. It's actually got a free DNS uh, period here uh, where you can manage a domain that's hosted somewhere else through their free DNS service. And so let me just click on that right here. You come to their webpage, namecheap.com, and you go to free DNS. Now, the reason they do this is because they um, feel that their service is so good that you using their free tools will probably cause you to want to have your domain hosted with them anyway. And so it's a way for them to kind of advertise their service uh, and also to provide uh, a service to users as well uh, to make this work. So let me, let me walk you through how this happens. So here you're going to enter a, uh, your domain uh, or subdomain name here. And so what I'm going to do is just enter a domain name. just like that and then we're gonna say get DNS now I already have an account with them that I've had so we're just gonna go here they usually make you uh, log in uh, with that but here it says okay we got the results you wanna add this particular domain uh, to the free DNS so there's no charge and so we're gonna go ahead and uh, add it to my cart here you can see it's in my cart it's free no charge so I'm gonna say set up DNS and so once I've done that, I've got these results. Now, what's going to happen is, is I need to go over to my domain provider and I need to put in all of these name servers. Because what's going to happen is it's going to replace your domain registrar's name servers with the name servers that you need um, from Namecheap in order for this to work. Now, you do have a limited amount of time to do this. I believe it's only 45, uh, 48 hours or something that they need you to put these things in. So you'll want to make sure that you're ready to do this when you get started. And then what they do is they ping the uh, your domain registrar site to make sure these uh, name servers are set up. And when they do, then they give you access to the service uh, to set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in uh, over at my domain uh, registrar, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I am over at my domain registrar. I'm over here at Hover, and so this is what their DNS uh, area looks like. This is where I would manage the domain details here. And your domain registrar may be a little different, uh, but down here you can see where I've got name servers here uh, in order to register the name servers that I need, and this is where I need to put that information in on this place. So I just say Edit. And what I do is come in and add a name server. And I'm just going to paste in here the one that they have set up for me. And it's just basically one through five. And I'm going to go ahead and add that. And it's going to update my account details. And so now it's added that registrar. Now I just go right back in and I'm going to edit it again. And I'll come through here. And what I'll do is I'll delete the ones for Hover. And you have to do this, depending on your registrar, you may have to do this one at a time. So i got to come back in here and delete this one. Oh, again, I have to have two name servers. So let's go ahead and put the second one in. And just change this number to two. And I'm going to add that one. That's going to give me the second one here. And then we'll edit and come back in here and edit again. And I'll just delete the old uh, NS records or the name server records so that now I've got these in here. Now I've got to go in and add all of the other ones, so let me go ahead and go through and do that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all of the name servers in here. Again, these match the ones that I've got over here that it's asked us to do. And so what's going to happen is their system's going to periodically monitor my DNS setting, and it's going to activate that domain once it's pointing to their servers. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. So that now that I've got this set up over here at Hover, that means that my domain that I set up with them is going to point that direction. Okay, so that's who's giving them um, basically the authority becomes free DNS instead of Hover. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back into free DNS here. And so it says click here to manage this domain. So I'm going to go ahead and say click here. And it's going to take me into their domain uh, management area here. And so I'm going to go ahead and let that load, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so everything is loaded, and you can see here it says I'm set up with another registrar so because that hasn't come through yet that it's verified my uh, servers there. Now there's a couple of things that, uh, that I need to do here on this management page. This is where I'll manage my domain. If I just slide down here, you'll see where it says Dynamic DNS. And so I just need to slide this little uh, slider here to open up, and you'll see it's going to give me a Dynamic DNS password. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. 
Uh, there's also a client software that's included. Now, they don't have uh, software for the Mac, and so it's only for a Windows machine. But I'm going to show you a way that we can do this so that your IP address is always updated. Now, one of the things we need to do and make sure that we've got is that we have records here. And so you can see down here, it gave me this little drop down for records. I'm just going to add a new record here. And so it's going to click on this add a new record. And you see it says A plus dynamic DNS record. Now, what I need to put in here is the at sign. right here because that's uh, that serves as the host and then I need to put in an IP address now in this case um, I don't have an IP address yet because it hasn't updated uh, for me you can put in your public IP address there or you can just put in any IP address so I'm just gonna put one in here something like that that was my server address before uh, you can leave this as automatic, and I'm going to go ahead and save all of the changes so that that record's added. So now I've got that at record added. Now I can also go in and add another record, and let's say I want to add one for server. So just like we did with the host names, we do that here. So we'll say server, and we'll do the same thing. And save that one. And so you can go through and do this for all the different things that you want to put in front of your domain. So now that we've got this all set up, let me show you what to do with uh, setting up a client that will keep your dynamic DNS all updated. Now when it comes to updaters that will update your public IP address with Namecheap servers, uh, there's a couple of options for the Mac. Uh, one is an application that was put together by uh, a customer who wanted to set up his own uh, system here because there wasn't one available from Namecheap themselves. Uh, so this takes a little bit of compiling and things to do. Uh, another one that I found was on the Mac App Store here, and it's uh, $3.99, so it's pretty cheap, and this is called IP Monitor. And this will do uh, the same thing. It'll just run in the background and keep your public IP address, your dynamic IP, in sync uh, with Namecheap. And so this is the one that I went for. Uh, let me go ahead and put this down here. Uh, if you come up to the top, it's right up here in the menu bar. You can see it's a little globe up here. If I just click on this, uh, you want to make sure you set it to launch at login. And let's just go ahead and view the preferences that are here as well. So this is the preference window, and you can see it's already uh, figured out what my public IP is and all of that kind of information. It's already done that for me. Uh, now all I have to do is add Namecheap's information. So I just come over here. I hit the plus button right here. And I'm going to give the service a name. So let's just call it free DNS. We're going to select a provider. And that provider is going to be Namecheap. And you can see all the different providers that are available here. And then here we put in the password, which we had copied before. I'm just going to paste it in there. Uh, we put the domain name in here. And you can put a host name if you want, but the domain name is fine. And I'm just going to say add. And what it does is it adds that service right here. And I can check it. And as soon as I check it, it's going to uh, start it as soon as I throw the switch here. So let's go ahead and just turn it on. And so what it's going to do is check the configuration. It's refreshing the service. And everything should be active and ready to go. Now we can check that just by coming over here. Let's go back to our advanced DNS. And you can see that it has added the public IP address. It's read my settings, and it put that value in here so that it is updating it. And then it'll just continue to run in the background and make those updates happen. So hopefully that helps you get started with Dynamic DNS in a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm probably going to show you more about this service that's available for Namecheap because it is pretty good. It looks like there's mail settings and all kinds of things that you can do with this. And the great part about it is it's free. I mean, if you have your domain hosted somewhere else, you can just set this up and it's free. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.